What is up, everybody? 6.2, Volumes of Revolutions, Washer Method. Today, we're going to find the volume of a plane rotated around the X or Y axis using the disk washer method. Okay, now, disk washer, it's technically the same thing, just washer. You'll see the difference um, as we go through these, and I will make note when we go through our examples, what the difference between the two is. It's the same process, but this basically just refers to a different looking picture um, when we draw, when we revolve around one of our axes or rotate around one of our axes. All right, so here, what I want you to think about is a rectangle that's butted right up against the y-axis, two dimension. What we're going to do is we are gonna rotate this figure right around the y-axis, rotate. And when you rotate, it gives me a three-dimensional shape. So imagine me doing this, rotate, rotate, and as you can see, it forms a cylinder. I'm gonna put disc here, okay? You'll see why a little bit later on. Let's say now I take that rectangle and I decide to take that rectangle and swing it away from the y-axis and I'm still gonna revolve it around the y-axis, okay? If I revolve this thing or rotate this thing around the y-axis, okay, it does this. And here. And here. Whoops. That's incorrect. Let me redo. All right, so again, we're gonna take this thing and it's gonna do this and something that looks like that. And you should notice that we have ourselves a hollowed out cylinder, okay? Excuse my drawing, it's not the greatest, but it is a hollowed out cylinder. Both of these cylinders have volume to them and that's gonna be our job today to find the volume of a cylinder here that's not hollowed out and here a cylinder that is hollowed out okay so this is a cylinder what we refer to as a cylinder within a cylinder i'm just going to write washer here okay all right let's go over our next page so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to piggyback off of what we've been doing if you notice i've got a function f here in quadrant one and a function G here in quadrant one. And up to this point, you've been asked to find the area between both of these curves, the shaded region. And the way that you've been doing that is you've been expressing the concept of either top minus bottom or right minus left, okay? And that association has been with a rectangle embedded within the figure, multiple rectangles, but I'm just gonna sort of make just one here, all right? Now, imagine taking that rectangle and revolving it or rotating it around, for this example, the x-axis, all right? So it's gonna go around and around and around. And your eyes and your brain have to work together and now think three dimension, all right? I know that it can be kind of tough to think three dimension, okay? But imagine taking this thing and doing that and then again that and what's happening is you can see that you've got like this circle within a circle but keep in mind that every rectangle also has width to it so that must mean that your cylinder that you're making has to have depth to it and hopefully you can see right there, kind of shading in lightly, 
the depth of this cylinder, okay, which technically is actually going to be the height of it, all right, if I kind of just turn my paper like that, you should be able to see that this is a hollowed out cylinder and this thing right there, that is the height of the cylinder. Well, the height of the cylinder is actually going to come from the width of this rectangle, all right? Now, we should make mention that the volume formula for any cylinder, and let me go ahead and draw you this cylinder, which if you notice, if anybody knows what a washer is, okay, it almost looks like a thick coin that's kind of hollowed out on the inside, all right? Now, keep in mind that if you want to find the volume of any cylinder, <coughs> that's just pi r squared h. But if I would like to find the volume of our cylinders being rotated, we have to think calculus, okay? The volume here is going to equal to the radius of the big rectangle or rectangle, the radius of the uh, outer cylinder, the radius of the smaller cylinder, which will be both denoted as R, but one will be big R and one will be little r. And then where is our height going to come from? Well, your height is going to come from your delta x or your dx or your change in x or basically the width of each rectangle. All right, so what would this look like with calculus? Well, with calculus, in order to find the volume of these cylinders, I know you can see the formula over here, but your f of x function is going to give you that, um, is going to give you, well, one of your functions will give you your big radius, and one of your functions will give you your little radius. In this case, because we are revolving around the x-axis and your f function is further out away from the rotation, axis of rotation, that makes that the big R. And your g of x function okay, is going to be closer to the axis of rotation, which makes it your little r. The function further away from the axis of rotation will always be your big R. And the one closer to the axis of rotation will always be your little r. So if you want to find the volume of this hollowed out cylinder, it will be V equals pi times big R squared multiplied by delta X, subtract pi times little r squared multiplied by delta X, okay? Outer cylinder minus the inner cylinder volume subtracted gives you the volume of what remains. It's like a donut, all right? It's like a donut. Um, so think of the hole in the middle of the donut. It's hollowed out. The donut's hollowed out. The only volume that you have is the actual donut that you're eating. And that's kind of like what we're doing here. So what does this actually look like? V equals pi times big R squared. Actually, technically, it's pi times delta X times the quantity R squared minus little r squared but we always put our delta x at the end because that represents our dx. And then when we put it into integral form, because remember, we don't just have one rectangle in here, we have many rectangles. So our volume has to be the sum of all of these different uh, um, washers put together, all right? So therefore the formula will be V equals pi multiplied by the integral from a to b of big R squared minus little r squared times delta x. These two formulas are the same exact thing. The only difference though is, is remember we may revolve around the x-axis, we may revolve around the y-axis, thus in terms of dy or, or excuse me, dx or dy. All right. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at our steps to doing this. Steps. Number one, draw a picture. Identify the region that would be the area bounded between 
the curves. The cross sections, the washers must be, and this part's really important, must be perpendicular to the axis of rotation, okay? A washer gets formed when your two curves or your area is not, or your two curves, neither one of them are touching the axis of rotation. It makes this washer, okay? If one of the curves, if you're revolving around it, one of your functions is actually one of the axes, then it gives us a disc, okay? No hollowed out portion. If you're rotating around the x-axis, then you, you have to do it in terms of x limits, which means dx. If you're rotating around the y-axis, then it's y limits, and that's in terms of dy, okay? The radius is always measured from the axis of rotation out to the curve, okay? Always, always, always. So make sure that you identify which radius is what, which radius is big R, which function is gonna be big R, which function is gonna be little r, all right? And then don't forget to square each of the radii before subtracting them. Um, so just keep in mind that we will be utilizing a calculator to do the majority of this, all right? And so you are going to see plenty of examples that involve both X and Y um, rectangles, all right? So that is going to be the end of part one. We will have part two and most likely a part three. Mr. Miller is out.